the show. Yes, Kate Hills on Radio Arda. And this evening I have another lovely guest with me. And her name is Emily Lauren Jones. Good evening, Emily. Good evening, Kate. It's really nice to have you here. I've been looking forward to having this uh, conversation with you for a long time. Now, we are going to be talking about the whole hashtag Me Too. Mm-hmm. And you know what I'm talking about when I Absolutely, mention that. Absolutely, yes. Now, did you feel that the whole hashtag Me Too was um, needed? Was it something that you thought was, was a good idea? Do you know about the history of it? Um, I was volunteering um, and working as an intern for for the Birmingham Literature Festival at the time um, when it was starting to come out and we had a lot of events that were sort of focused around that. Um, As as a writer it coincided with um, the year of um, women in publishing which was interesting as well so I got quite a a good perspective of of it from the arts side of things Mm. and, and the areas that I work in. I think I think it was definitely needed. I, th- I think the conversation needed to happen. I think the awareness needed needed to be there, um, and a discussion around behaviour really of what is and isn't acceptable, and what actually is and isn't acceptable to different people as well, yeah, yeah. which is probably a key part of the argument. I mean, I for anybody who doesn't know, um, I'd, I'd be surprised, but you never know. There, there might be. But the whole hashtag Me Too movement started, I believe uh, it was a lady in America who um, she had been raped years previously. And um, I hope I've got this right, but her daughter came to her saying that she'd experienced the same thing. And it really kind of touched something in her that she thought, this happens to so many women. Um, I mean, we're not just talking rape today. We're talking about the whole, yeah. like you say, you know, unwanted attention, all the rest of it, um, which happens as a woman. It, it might happen from a man's point of view as well, but all I know is that statistics uh, show that when it comes to the majority of um, rapes, sexual abuse, domestic violence, the perpetrators tend to be male and the victims tend to be women but that again I'm not saying it never happens to men I wouldn't say no. that and it definitely does but we're both female we're having we a conversation so talking. we will do we will acknowledge that and do this from from a, a woman's point of yes, view yes yes um now how do you feel I don't know if you've had it said to you but I have in my role as radio presenter, when I start talking about women's rights or Mm. domestic violence statistics regarding women, there will always be some bright spark, usually male, that says, what about men? And I have to say, if you have to say that to me, then you're actually missing the point. Yeah, I mean, I I think you can relate it sort of to you know the idea of Black History Month when people go when's White History Month and Gay Pride when's Straight Pride, and I think what you have to appreciate is that we have those because there have been groups historically who yeah. have been suppressed, who have been seen as, as secondary, and and women c- come under that, females yeah. come under that, so that's why we we're, we're talking about it. Yeah, and I think it's very important to talk about. You know, I, I think also when you think about. Um, you know, sometimes we can look towards other countries, other cultures, and, and say, well, you know, that shouldn't happen or this shouldn't happen. But it would, you know, in Britain as well, um, mm. it wasn't that far back that um, when a, wim- a woman got, got married, all her property became that of her husband's. Mm. Any uh, money that she had became her husband's. Any children that they had were belonging to the husband. Um, A man could just turf his woman, you know, his his wife out of out of the house and she would have no rights. No, and we're still living in a in a patriarchal society really, because of of the remnants on it. I mean you only have to think of of a wedding really, you know, and the bride is handed to the groom. You know, now we do it because it's tradition, but if you look into it that you know 
you've got usually the woman will take the man's name because she, and they used to do it obviously because she was part of him she belongs to him yeah and you know we've mo- we have moved on we have made a lot of progress but there are some things that are so deep rooted that we sometimes actually don't even notice them yeah. we don't acknowledge that that's where it came from yeah and so questioning is important definitely and you know we could sit here and we could we could talk about maybe our own experiences mm. because as a woman I have my own experiences um, that have been quite severe and in the cases where I have been a victim of, of certain things, um, it has always been a man that I know. And they say that it's very rarely a stranger mm-hmm. off the street, it's usually someone that, that you know. But I have spoken to many women, many female friends who have actually said, yeah, me too. And I think that's why the whole hashtag Me Too thing is so important because it's letting women know that, yeah, it, it happens. Yeah, um, but also it validates it. It, ma- it. it doesn't make you feel like you're horrible or dirty or yeah. that it's something that you need to be ashamed of because actually it's the person, the perpetrator essentially, that should be ashamed. But you do sometimes feel like, did I ask for it? Did I do anything to encourage that, you know? And you st- and that's that's the wrong that's the wrong thing, isn't it? That's the wrong attitude. But Definitely. sometimes that's the default setting. So hashtag me too is letting you know, you know, actually this this did happen, you're not on your own and it's not okay. Yeah. And I think it what has made it um, you know, into such a big movement is the fact that you had celebrities coming forth, um, you know, which is is still still happening, you know, saying, yeah this happened to me, Uh, you know, in in Hollywood, it was a well-known fact about Mm. the, um, you know, people would laugh about the director's casting couch. Why is that funny? Why is it even acceptable? You know, so now we've got these stars coming out and saying, yeah, I was made to feel very uncomfortable. I was told that I would get this part if I slept with whoever. You know, I, th- I think that went right, like from the top to the to the bottom of, of life. You know that that happens. Um, yeah. Because I know people that have had experiences who who were just you know in an ordinary job and were told you know oh, you, you you want to be treated well in this job you want to, to go go up to a higher level, um then you're going to have to to you know please me. Yeah. If you like. Yeah. You know it, it it's shocking, absolutely shocking. But I think with the whole hashtag Me Too movement, I think it's also a way of educating men, which I think is a good thing. Yes. Because I think sometimes our programming, our upbringing, you know, I'm thinking back to when I was a very young girl, it was a bit different to what it is today. Mm -hmm. And if your boss gave you a little pat on the bottom, it was seen as quite acceptable. Whereas now... It isn't, and it should never have been acceptable. No. So I think women are coming into their own. They're realising, no, I don't have to put up with this, but I think also men are being educated. And I feel, I don't know about you, Emily, but I've, I feel that this is where the problem can be resolved in education. Oh, absolutely. Although I do think that there's a, there's a small element who know exactly they're doing and use it as a means of power Mm. i mean i'm fortunate because i have never had anything horrendous happen to me you know i've not been like horribly assaulted or anything Mm. i I think that i have just probably experienced what 99 percent of women experience um which is the little everyday sort of things that you you don't actually always know if it is Yes. The problem if it's not, but then it leaves you feeling uncomfortable and you yeah. think actually then that wasn't all right. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I think that um, it's a terrible shame that a lot of young people are growing up being sexually educated through porn because it's so easy to, to view these days. And I, I think this is where the education needs to start. It needs to start real you know, yeah. young, sort of first school kind of, you know, as a child is growing up. No, they don't need to know 
the whole details. I'm not saying sexually edu educate five years <laughs> old, but they need to know what is acceptable. And I think they need to be made aware that if if somebody makes you feel uncomfortable, if someone touches you inappropriately, this is not okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I hope it's changed now, but when I was at school, not that much attention was given to it if, uh, you know, I had other children, boys, you know, when you're sort of 14, 15, who, who do touch you inappropriately. And if you, well, one, you, sometimes you're too mortified to say anything, but if you do, it's sort of like they don't want to deal with it. It's a bit yeah. like, oh, you know, off, off you go. Just go and sit down and, and don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, which is, is so wrong. I would like to think that that is changing. I don't know about schools, but then we've still got the Warwick University incident. And, you know, and, and then there's also Cambridge that's been in the news this week for something not too dissimilar. Mm. Um, and if you, if you think, well, you're supposed to be the best in the country and this is what, what you're doing, mm. Mm, then that's a real shame. Yeah. That said, I don't want us to go too far the other way um, in the sense that I think that sometimes now men are too worried about sort of just, you know, as they're walking past putting their arm up or even giving you a hug when they, they see you when actually that would have been perfectly innocent. Yeah. And as long as you are comfortable in each other's company, then that is definitely okay because it would be so sad if as a society we stop yeah. touching each other. Because we need that human yes, contact do anyway, need don't human we? Contact. You know, you only have to look at the effect that it has on children when nobody hugs them or cares for them in that way or animals and and if that's what's happening to them just because we're adults and we adjust to it it's still not not right yeah. but then of course what what one person feels is okay is different to another person because yeah. I know that I have friends who don't like being wolf whistled at now I actually don't mind that that just makes me smile because like you know you like to go out of the house thinking you look nice and if somebody does that and it's a bit of a joke and they have a laugh and, and you think, ah, oh, that's good, you know? Yeah. It's, I always think, oh, when they stop doing that, then I'll worry. Um, <laughs> but when when I get it, that, and this has happened many times, you know, m more than I can count on both my hands, is when somebody comes up to me and, even, and actually starts talking to me, like the only thing I can compare it to is like you would talk to like a little cat or something, like, hello, what's your name and how are you? And I think... Creepy. N no, yeah. Yeah, very, uh, and it's a lot to do with like the tone of voice and the respect and things. So I think a lot of it is to do with intention because it's very different. If somebody I work with, like male or female, says to me, oh, that's a lovely dress, you look really nice today. That's great, that's a compliment, I want to hear that. Yeah. There's, there's, then, you know, the, the other side of it is if somebody says, oh, you know, Bottom looks nice in that. Then that's that's very different. That's so there different is meaning. there is a line, isn't yeah. there? I mean, th yeah, we don't want that. And I think it's intent. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Whether it's meant to make you feel uncomfortable or whether it's meant to make you feel comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a subject that we could, you know, <laughs> talk about forever and a day. I think, um, but I do think it it does boil down to education. I think that young people instead of just giving them sex education when mm. they're you know in their teens let's let's be open because i i do think that countries where they are more open you know i, th I think about amsterdam there doesn't seem to be this um so much a, of this kind of um i i don't know how to put it you know um sex isn't sleazy yes you know i think it's it's an it's a normal thing um and i think if adults we talk about it openly um then for our children as well they can only benefit because they will actually learn what is and isn't acceptable we shouldn't just be leaving it down to the education system to educate our children that way no, but the education system is important because then you're making sure that everybody is on a level footing with it because, you know, some people will take the responsibility and will educate their children and others may feel uncomfortable with it Definitely. or they may not have, like, the, you know, the, a, the capacity to be able to yeah. adequately do that. That might yeah. not be their strength. No, um, I, d I do. I, I totally agree with you. Um, wow. 
I think we need to um, have this conversation again a I'm bit, sure bit we'll later. I'm sure we'll continue yeah. after the show. <laughs> there's so, I mean, there's so much more you can say. You know, you yeah. mentioned Amsterdam where they've got like a, a zero rape rate now, but then you get into the idea of whether legal prostitution is okay, and that's a whole other conversation. Well, maybe we need to save that one for <laughs> next time. <laughs> But yes, thank you for tuning in. Thank you to my lovely guest, Emily Lauren jones who um, I think next time I get you on, Emily, I will get her to share some poetry as well. Brilliant poet. I will be back next Tuesday, 6pm. Take care. <laughs>